Hello everyone, so this video is a introduction to our video and this is for the beginners most probably for those who have not used R before and I will be dealing with very basic things so here uh, if you remember that in the environment section all the outputs are stored and in the history section all the history all the codes that we run those get stored there and we get our outputs here in the in the script this is the script section here we write our codes and we get the results in console and here we have the pods if we, if we create a pod or something that we can do here we can see what packages we are working on we can install new pa packages and update our update uh, our existing packages and this is the file section just to where we can see the working directory where everything get saved all the outputs from R. So anyway, the first thing that we would do maybe to specify a variable. Okay. And a variable refers to a reserved memory to store values. And in 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 in, in general there are three types of variables, I would say like numeric, string and logical. So we will see how we can create uh, these three types of variables. Right? So the first one here, so I'm, I'm trying to store, I'm trying to create a variable a, which will have a value of 30. Okay, so I will just click run. And then the second one is a string variable where I'm saying welcome to research home. So you may have noticed that I put this in quotes. So whenever you have a string variable, you have to put it in, in quotes. Okay, and then I run it so I get a value for B so B is a variable and this is the value for B so as you see the values of the uh, of, of these variables are getting stored here in the environment then C uh, here I'm trying to create a logical variable which can take only true or false in this case I'm saying true okay yeah, you... and then D I'm again creating a numeric variable which is D has a value of 15. Um, this numeric variables, I, uh, this is actually integer. Uh, if I put an L here, that would mean that it is an integer variable. Okay. Let's say, for instance, uh, I have a D, right? And to see the type of our variable, we can write class. Then let's say I write D here, and it will give us numeric, as you can see here. But if I put L here and then run it again, and I run it again, I'll see integer. So putting L after any integer number makes the variable class integer. Okay. So instead of having integer, we could also have numeric, for instance, 30.50. So integer cannot take fractions, but numeric can take fractions. So that's the difference between them. For simplicity, let's now keep it 30 and let's now keep it to 15, okay? I'll run them all again. And yeah, these values are updated here. Okay. And if you want to see the class of others, for instance, let's see the class of B. It should be string, character. Yeah, in, in R we call it character, okay? So we learn how we can create we can specify a variable okay? okay let us now look into the data operators in R so there are five categories we will go one by one first one is arithmetic categories okay so based on the values we have defined for the variables we will do some calculations here for instance a plus D the plus is the arithmetic operator here so we should get 45 then we should get 15 and I'm, I'm running one by one as you see here okay and then we get 450 multiplying a and d and if we divide a by d we get 2 and a square is 900 okay if yeah we can change it to a cube as well a yeah we can increase the numbers but that's not the point i just want to show you how it works and when we do it like this a percentage percentage d and it gives us the reminder after divide after division. What that means is that, for instance, here we have the value of a is 30 and d is 15. So when we divide them, 
what do we get? We get zero. So that's what we should get now. Zero. And when we put a percentage, then slash, then percentage d. So this this cases, this operator gives us the rounding number, the roundup dividing number. Okay. So if we run this code, we get two. Okay. Which is yeah, the, the divider. And here, if you have noticed that I'm putting this hash before I make some comment. So in R, when you want to make any kind of comment, then you just put hash in front of that. Another thing we should do is that we should put this uh, this clone after the codes. This defines that the code is the, the code is uh, finished. Okay. So for instance, this part is one line and this part is another line. So this colon defines the sequence of codes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The second data operator is assignment operator, where we want to assign some value to a variable. Okay. So for instance, here, what we are trying to do, we are trying to assign 100 to E. Or in this case, we are trying to assign 90 to F. So if we round them, you would see the values are assigned 100 to E and f uh, 92f and actually we can use equal uh, it will get the same okay yeah often actually I, like for instance here i was using equal to to assign a number to a variable okay and then we have the relational operators where we can define we can see if something is greater than something we can compare between different variables for instance here or e so we have a value of e 100 and value of f is 90 right so e is greater than f which is true so we should get true e is less than f no false and e and f are equal so to 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 mention if two variables have equal numbers then we use equal equal okay so we will just click this and yeah this is false because they are not equal so when we put this symbol uh, before equal, and that would mean that they're not equal, okay? So for instance, E and F, they're not equal, and that should be true. And then we can combine greater than and equal to and less than and equal to in these cases, and we get the, yeah, we get the results here. So these operators are actually very helpful when we want to do some loops or we, we want to run some, we want to, filter some data from a large data set. So yeah, in, in many cases, actually, this, this, uh, this kind of operators are very helpful. And we'll see later when we'll get to some advanced uh, applications and coding, and we'll see how we use them. Then we move to the logical operator. Okay. So let's say we first define G and H as true and false. G is true. So you can you for to define any logical operator for true you have to write either tree r u e capital or you can just write t so both works okay and same for false you can either write f capital f or f a l s e okay so we we define these variables now these are the operators that we are going to look into and so when we say G and H, it will give us a logical, it will give, a, give us a logical answer like if, if both are true, then we will get true, okay, which is not the case here. So it's false because both are not true, okay. And yeah, G and G, both are true, so we'll get a true, right. And then when we write it like this, that G, this bar, and then H, which gives an R operator. So G or H, if any of them is true, we will get a true. Like this here. So G is true, that's why we get a true. And this bar, this, this, this symbol here, this is the not symbol. So not G. So what is that? G is true. So not G is false. So we'll get a false. Okay, so now we will move to the spatial characters. This is the last set of characters. Here, 
for instance here i equals to 1 is to 20 so we are defining a range i will give us a range of numbers all the numbers from 1 to 20 okay let's say here so i gives us a range integer numbers it, it is giving us integer numbers from 1 to 20 and to see them we can click here i and we get all the numbers here right so now we can use this function here percentage in percentage to see if any number is within a range of numbers for instance here 10 if 10 is is a number within the range within within i so to see that if we click it we will see that it is true 10 is a number within i here it is but what about if we put 100 if 100 is within i then if we run it then if we run it we will see it's false because 100 is not within this range of i okay so these are some operators and you will see actually uh, in, the, in the coding and in creating loops different kind of loops and different kind of data filters and uh, yeah it, th this kind of operators are used a lot and these are really helpful so that's it for this part and here if you if you want to clear it you can clear it here to to clear the environment you can clear it here to clear the history so in the history you will see what everything that we have done is here so if you want to clear it we will clear from here and to clear the console part we will just press control control and l and then it's gone okay so in the next in the next video i will cover the data types okay. thank you for watching so if you find it useful like comment share and subscribe to our youtube channel